My name is Diane Beck and I'm an Associate Professor of Psychology at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. My area of research is uh, cognitive neuroscience and so I'm going to tell you about uh, PhD programs in cognitive neuroscience. So cognitive neuroscience is the study of the neural substrates of cognition and here uh, cognition is broadly defined so it includes uh, memory and decision making, the sorts of things you might think of as cognition, but also sensation and perception, uh, motor movements and uh, emotion. Many uh, cognitive neuroscience PhD programs are designed to prepare a student to uh, take a research position at a research university, a faculty position at a research university. So uh, this means that they um, will be both teaching and uh, doing research. Uh, however, a PhD in uh, cognitive neuroscience could also prepare you to go into uh, industry, uh, such as a pharmaceutical company or other kinds of industries that use uh, neuroimaging technologies. So neuro neuroimaging is, are things like uh, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, uh, fMRI, which is functional MRI, um, EEG, and uh, optical imaging, all technologies that uh, study the brain. Uh, in addition, uh, a person may get a job in a, a national science lab or in a, in a military lab. Um, and finally, uh, many uh, PhDs in cognitive neuroscience do a postdoctoral uh, position um, during this time. So this is after a PhD, uh, you go to work in another faculty member's lab, um, and this is often to learn uh, a new technique or uh, just to increase uh, the, the number of publications and experience in the lab. And this is done because uh, academic positions in uh, cognitive uh, neuroscience are competitive, and uh, so anything a student can do to improve their uh, resume or curriculum vita um, is, is a good thing. To receive a PhD in cognitive neuroscience, you have to uh, both uh, complete uh, various coursework as well as a, a dissertation. So uh, the coursework will include uh, classes uh, in the various techniques of, of cognitive neuroscience, so the, the various methodologies, so this is fMRI, uh, MRI, EEG, this sort of thing. Um, you would be expected to learn one or two in depth, uh, but in general get a basic understanding of uh, many of the methods. Um, in addition, you'd be expected to take a grad level statistics course. Um, and you'll also take uh, what we call content courses. So those are courses that serve either survey the field or go into depth in a specific um, area. Uh, some uh, uh, PhD programs will also require a neuroanatomy course. So in addition to uh, the coursework, uh, as I said, you have to complete a, a dissertation. So a dissertation um, is an original um, and publishable uh, piece of work. Um, this would require that you both design, run and analyze an experiment. Um, the exact uh, scope and topic of that dissertation is determined in consultation with your research advisor as well as uh, a committee of, of faculty. So um, in addition, to be competitive in uh, uh, the marketplace, you also want to be um, doing research throughout your graduate career and hopefully publishing throughout your graduate career. So you want to publish uh, during grad school and, and soon after. And so this um, can be part of the dissertation or might even go uh, beyond the dissertation. So if you're interested in going into a cognitive uh, neuroscience PH, PhD program, there's a number of things uh, that you can do that can increase your chances of getting into a good program. Um, so your GPA and uh, GRE scores uh, need to be uh, good, as is true of most uh, graduate programs. Um, but in, for cognitive neuroscience, it's also helpful if you have worked in a uh, laboratory. Um, and really, any kind of uh, laboratory work is helpful, but it's especially helpful if it's a cognitive neuroscience lab 
or a uh, cognition lab or a, a clinical psych lab or or, um, or a neuroscience lab, anything related to uh, the kind of work you might be doing in uh, graduate school. Um, once at graduate school, it's important to balance both your uh, coursework and your research. So to get a PhD, you need to um, uh, produce a dissertation, a, a body of, of research. Um, so you need to be able to manage your time so that you're both uh, learning what you need uh, to learn, but also getting hands-on experience with um, the cognitive neuroscience techniques. Uh, in addition, um, uh, a cognitive neuroscience techniques can take uh, a lot of time. Um, and so another uh, important time management uh, a skill is making sure you set aside time to read and think deeply. Um, it's very easy uh, to get uh, so involved in the uh, technique itself, learning all the ins and outs of the technique, that you can forget why you're doing it. You're doing it to learn uh, something about the brain and so you need to have read um, the literature on, on the particular question that you're uh, interested in. So uh, cognitive neuroscience is an exciting and, and growing uh, field and the hope is um, in graduate school you get both a, a broad view of uh, cognitive neuroscience but also uh, contribute uh, to our understanding of uh, the brain and the human mind.